Hi, Chris. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sarah Reynolds. I'm with the Colorado Oil and Gas Association, and I'm joined today with Chris Sauter with uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Colorado. We're so appreciative of you taking some time. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, of course, you guys are one of our grantees for 2021 um, at our Mardi Gras Ball. And this is just an opportunity for us to just learn a little bit more about your programs, uh, what you've worked on for the past year, particularly with the unusual nature of 2020 and what you are looking forward to in 2021. Uh, so first, when I first started looking into Big Brothers Big Sisters, I was really impressed with the type of programs you have. You have a wide range of programs that are tailored to some very specific needs in the community. So can you share a little bit more about the kids and families that are in your program? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for your support. Um, the, 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 the programs of Big Brothers Big Sisters are uh, designed to support kids who uh, are, are really just like me. Um, I'm the child of a, a single mom. And when I was six months old, my dad left our family and, and unfortunately we never saw him again. And, and my mom is the absolute hero of my life. She was armed with a uh, high school diploma and a remarkable work ethic. And she put her head down and she fought hard for my brother and I every single day. And along the way, she learned that she couldn't do it alone. And she helped me get a mentor in my life. Uh, and that mentor's name was Al. And in particular, while Al is still very much a strong part of my life today, 35 years later, in particular, uh, he made a remarkable impact during my teen and early adult years. Um, and in Colorado, that's, that's a description of the type of child and family that, that we serve. Um, we work with kids who are ages nine to 18 years old who are facing adversity. Most live in, in households that have single parents and, and lower incomes. Some may have a parent who's incarcerated or deceased, and most of our children attend uh, schools that have a high percentage of students who are living in poverty, uh, which is just simply a representation of, of some of the surroundings that they may have in their community. We have uh, three core programs where our staff match and continuously support one-to-one -one mentoring matches between a mentee who we call a little and an adult volunteer mentor who we call a big. And those programs are all evidence-based and they take a very preventative, positive youth development approach. I think it's so important to say that we are not here to fix kids. We're here to cultivate and support the remarkable strengths that each individual child in our program brings to our program. Well, I know there's been a lot of attention on the pandemic and specifically how it has impacted children. Not only have they been unable to access school and some of those emotional and social supports that they get through school, but the kids in your programs have not been able to get together in person. Like you were saying before, the bigs and the littles have had to get very creative on how they connect uh, on their mentoring relationships during this pandemic. So tell us a little bit about how you've pivoted in response to all of this. Well, you, creativity is key. You, you hit the, the nail on the head, Sarah. Um, without a doubt, the, the economic and, and uh, the, the, the stresses associated with the economic situation and the social isolation caused by the pandemic, it is uh, disproportionately impacting the youth who we serve. And there's no question that, that these youth are bearing some of the heaviest burdens uh, during the pandemic. Um, at Big Brothers Big Sisters, we are thankful to say that in partnership with so many families and volunteers who we serve, that our mentoring matches have been able to stay connected um, largely virtually uh, during the pandemic. The, the specific adaptation would depend upon the program that the mentoring match is in. We do have a school program where our mentoring matches are staying connected virtually using tools like Zoom and, and they're able to support those youth at staying focused and on track academically. And in other programs where we're operating independently of school partnerships, we are following Colorado's public health guidelines. And when a parent and a mentor agree to follow uh, a set of risk mitigating uh, uh, approaches and guidelines, those matches are able to meet one-to-one -one in person, keeping their interactions outdoors, physically distanced, and of course, masked. 
Um, but there are a number of matches uh, in our programs uh, where they uh, cho are choosing at this time to stay connected virtually out of respect for the risks that are involved with COVID-19. So we're supporting those matches at being able to stay connected using the same types of tools we would use in a school program, Zoom, Google Hangouts, FaceTime, and also uh, a lot of collaborative game playing apps like Minecraft, which I never heard of before uh, the pandemic. Um, and they're allowing our matches opportunities to stay engaged in relationship building uh, activities and conversations. So all of our matches are eager for this pandemic to be tamed. I'm sure no different from you and I, uh, but it is inspiring to see so many youth and volunteers be able to stay connected in such unique ways. And it continues to demonstrate the power of a consistent, caring, uh, youth mentoring relationship, uh, even in unique times like these. Well, I think we're all looking forward to uh, better things to come in 2021, for sure. I know that you know, in your mentoring programs, those kids and uh, their mentors are going to be able to get together again. But we, uh, we do have a lot of member companies here in the oil and gas industry in Colorado that are engaged with big brothers and big sisters, or maybe would like to be engaged more with what you do. So tell us a little bit more about how our employees can get involved and support your work in the coming year. Well, first of all, I wanna say thank you for that engagement. We are um, very lucky to have uh, the involvement of so many. Um, one thing we know here in, excuse me, my, my daughter is, I apologize. Absolutely. It's, it is 2021 and the pandemic is still part of our lives. We've all learned to be very adaptable. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Can you give me one second? Well, I think we're all looking better to some brighter days in 2021. And I know your bigs and littles are looking forward to getting together in person again. But thinking ahead and some of our member companies who might want to get involved, how might there be ways for employees of the oil and gas industry in our state to help support your work and get more involved with what you do? Well, I first want to thank all of the member companies who are already involved. We, we appreciate that engagement and, and support. It's so meaningful to our mission. Um, and and we, all of us acknowledge that there are so many unknowns in our communities and, and in our world right now. At Big Brothers Big Sisters, our truth, what we know, is that uh, a consistent, caring adult makes a difference in the life of a child. And uh, there are so many positive impacts that come from the protective factors that are formed when that positive adult relationship exists in a child's life. And just like uh, our mentees need the support of their mentors at this time, uh, our organization needs the support of our community uh, so that we can sustain our, our very important work. And so you might consider a donation, financial support, uh, ensures that we're able to keep our youth involved in our programs connected to their mentors. And uh, if anyone is interested in making a personal contribution to our organization, you can do so on our website at biglittlecolorado.org. Uh, you also might consider beginning the process of becoming a big brother or a big sister. Uh, we are actually at this time currently enrolling volunteers. Uh, those enrollments are predominantly virtual and we continue to make matches uh, at this time. So volunteering is a great way to kick off 2021 to support youth in our community. And you can also get information about volunteering on our website at biglittlecolorado.org. Uh, and lastly, if your organization is looking for ways to engage your employees in unique uh, opportunities, right now, some of our corporate partners are partnering to support uh, virtual STEM activities for the mentoring matches who are working to stay connected virtually. Um, we also have companies who are supporting their employees in developing vocational recorded videos that we can share with our matches, particularly those matches who are making post-secondary plans at this time. And we even have some corporate partners that are partnering to develop internship opportunities for the youth who we serve. So in general, there are a number of ways that you can get involved. Um, it, it can begin uh, with just simply going to our website, once again, at biglittlecolorado.org. And uh, I hope you hear me loud and clear. We would love to hear from you in 2021. Absolutely.
Absolutely, Chris. Thank you again for spending some time with us today, sharing a little bit more about your programs and really how we can get involved and make a difference through your organization. Uh, we're all looking forward to better and brighter things in 2021, and this is a great start. So thanks again for joining us and look forward to our partnership in the coming year. Thank you so much, Sarah.